In this video, I take you behind the scenes of the Rustic Songbird podcast where I interview Haley Alcott about writing songs using scripture. She talks about the method of psalming and how she has used that in her experience as a songwriter. We also talk about starting from a place of worship, coming from your own personal worship time with the Lord. I hope you enjoy this interview and I want to invite you to subscribe to, to this channel for more interviews with people in the industry and some encouragement from other musicians. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's get started. My guest on the show today is Haley Alcott and she is a worship pastor at a church in Ohio. She's also a mom. She's a songwriter. She has a beautiful voice and I've been personally enjoying her music and thought I would bring her on the show to talk about songwriting and especially songwriting using scripture that's not a topic that we've talked about a whole lot on the show but it is something that i think a lot of people would be interested in writing songs based on scripture so we're going to talk about Haley's story and then some of her experience songwriting specifically with psalms and other scriptures so Haley, welcome to the show thank you i'm happy to be here well, I haven't actually met you in person, I don't think, but I feel like I should know you because we're yeah. both part of the Brave Worship community and have a lot of mutual friends that are songwriters, worship leaders, moms, like in that similar yes. uh, stage of life and in that similar group of people. And so uh, I just kept seeing your name and hearing your name in the group and I watched some of your videos and I thought this would be a great topic to come on the show and talk about and just share some of your story. So I am getting to know you and I also want our listeners to get to know you. So share a little bit about your backstory, becoming a worship leader, worship pastor, and then um, becoming a songwriter as well. How did that all start for you? Yeah, uh, well, I am a pastor's kid. And uh, so that played a big part in who I am today, obviously. And my, my dad, is uh, the senior pastor at a church and has been for my entire life. And my mom is the worship pastor there. And um, it, it, you know, that has just been my life. And so um, sort of being entrenched in church, but um, I think some pastors, kids, you know, become super rebellious and then some are like stereotypical goody two shoes. And I have a sneaking suspicion I might be the goody two shoes one, but I, it wasn't intentional. It just like, I, as much as I would get bored at church sometimes as a kid, I, I think I actually grew to really love being there. And I just wanted, I kind of had FOMO if I wasn't there. And um, I just loved being a part of, of all of that. And, and so um, my mom is also extremely musical and very gifted and um, very creative as well. And uh, so that that's kind of the backdrop for a lot of it. But I uh, was, so I was kind of involved, just like I had no choice. I was going to be involved in everything, first right. of all. But I, over time, you know, I, I took piano um, most of, for all my life. And uh, my mom taught me like chords and stuff like that. So, and then I, she would have me be like, uh, play keys on the worship team. And I would sing harmonies and stuff. And my, my family's very musical, a lot of singing, a lot of harmonies <laughs> happening all the time. I love it. We're that awesome. family that harmonizes to happy birthday. And some people are like, really? But uh, so, uh, so that was kind of my childhood experience. And then as a teenager, my youth pastor um, was like, I want you to start a, a I want you to leave worship on Wednesday nights or something. And I, I want you to have a band. You can, you can do it. I want you to lead it. And I was like, you want me to what? And uh, <laughs> I can't believe, but then I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. And not, but not with confidence though, you know, like I was just like, I mean, I'll do it, but man, I don't know what's going to happen. And, and, but it was a, a little youth group. I mean, co comparatively speaking, um, but it still was very intimidating and, but I just like, it, it just came naturally to me to be in charge of a thing like that. And, um, uh, you know, I, I say naturally, you know, for, for however naturally you can be a leader when you're like 14 and you have right. no idea, like basic chord progressions and that's it. So, uh, that, that was kind of, you know, really crucial in my development as a leader because, 
he said, you know, I see this in you and just empowering mm -hmm. me to do that. Um, and I, that, that's something that, um, I will not forget and that has proved to be very formative but as far as songwriting I I kind of always have done that I've kind of always made up little songs I remember being a kid and trying to make up songs about things and getting really frustrated because it wasn't perfect and like I remember being like six years old and just being like why isn't this better <laughs> and I just <laughs> was always creating and uh, making up stories and um, always felt like a, a, a weirdo. I just felt like I was this awkward unicorn that didn't fit in anywhere, like not in a cool way, not like a cool unicorn, like just a very awkward, like, what's wrong with you? You know, like, why aren't you like other kids? Like you um, felt like you stood out, like you were just naturally different. Yes. And again, not like necessarily in a good way. I was very daydreamy. Um, and like my mom always thinks it's hilarious to tell about when I was in kindergarten and I like intentionally daydreamed during the first like standardized tests we had to take. She didn't know that, but she found out later that I had gotten like the lowest score in the entire grade. Like the teacher was super nice about it. And she was like, I don't think Haley understood that she had to take the test. <laughs> and my mom was like, are you sure? Is there something wrong? But I remember, I remember I had made up a whole story in my head because I just thought this isn't really, I'm not into this. Um, and so that just my personality being very daydreamy and constantly like head in the clouds, you know, my whole life has, has uh, sort of, uh, be things interesting and challenging for sure. But, um, in songwriting, it's a very good thing because, uh -huh. um, I can just think all the thoughts and feel all the feelings. And, um, that's, that's what happened with songwriting. I think initially, um, I, I always wanted to be a singer. I always knew that I wanted to do that in some way. And I didn't know what that meant. I'm still not really sure what that means. Um, <laughs> If you sing, you're okay. a singer, I guess. Yeah. So, but I remember in junior high, I wrote a song with a friend of mine and I think we sang it at our chapel and I'm sure it was terrible. I'm pretty sure it was like a Jackie Velasquez ripoff. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, but I remember doing that and like being, and, and it, it didn't even occur to me. I didn't know that songwriters were a thing. You um, just made up songs. I just, just made up. It was fun. Yeah. I just made up songs. Um, I have always been extremely passionate about larger than life stories, um, because I feel like they point to a larger than life God and, um, and they, they articulate his beauty and his love and his glory better than sort of the mundane things do a lot of times. Um, they just draw your gaze upward. They lift your gaze out of, you know, the, every day stuff. So, so I've always loved Lord of the Rings and, um, Chronicles of Narnia and Harry Potter and all of the things. So nerdy, just so nerdy. And, um, I just, I just like longed for life to be more like that. And so things that I would create were really driven by those stories. And so, um, even writing songs, I would want to write songs that sounded like they came from some magical story and, you know, and, uh, but I, I'm giving you a lot of really abstract things. I hope that's okay. No, I love that you brought up that like being creative and daydreamy and just like dreaming big in general made you feel like the weird one, but it's yeah. actually what makes you unique. And that's what I want people to hear from this story too, because I think so many people listening are going to relate to that feeling. I know that, <laughs> that I do, and I was always kind of the odd one out, but I would like just make up random songs and I didn't know there was a structure to it really you know I learned structure later on but initially the ideas came to me like yeah. changing the words to a melody or um just like mm -hmm. singing something and I didn't know the words so I'd fill in my own words yeah and so things like that normal people don't do that but songwriters <laughs> do and so yeah. it was like those little hints along your journey of like this is part of what you're supposed to do and then now as a grown-up and as <laughs> you know someone who is writing songs and 
you're using your imagination and your creativity in that musical way. It's just kind of cool to look back and be like, you know what, those little seeds were planted. And another thing I love about your story that you've shared so far is like having that person that spoke up and believed in you and said, I think you can do this. You know, why don't you try it? I think we all need some kind of mentor, some kind of person to uh, like give us that confidence when we're getting started and like have somebody we can look up to and yeah. then even now I'm trying to look for opportunities to, to do that for younger people or yeah. just people that are you know starting something new I think giving that vote of confidence goes a long way because I remember people in my youth group who were like hey I think Lydia could lead the band I think Lydia could sing this song, you know, and I was like, really? You think I could do it? <laughs> like you, yeah, I was in the background. I was like singing the harmony before I was leading. And then um, people would speak up and like give me a chance. And so I try to give other people a chance because of that. It was a huge part of my story too. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. I and then in your, um, I love that you're a second generation worship leader too. Like how cool is that, that your mom was and that you are like literally got it in your blood and you've been around it your whole life. And uh, I'm a worship leader at my church and I've led worship for a long time and just love that and also love the songwriting world. So what does that look like for you as far as like leading for your church, but also writing worship music and writing original music? What does that look like now? That's a really good question. Um, well, I, it's funny. I, I have been, I've had the title of worship pastor at my church and I've been full time for about a year. And, um, before that I was the, I was part time and my title was worship leader. And, okay, yeah. um, in, in beginning of 2018, my title was interim worship leader because I just offered, I was a volunteer at the time. I uh, had had a couple of babies and I was staying home with them, but just doing odd, odd jobs. I was teaching voice lessons, um, things like that out of my house. But, um, and help reel me back to your question because I, I'm going to get back to it, but I need you to remember what it was. So gotcha. yeah, <laughs> short term memory. I do not have that. Um, but, but it, it's just been really interesting because uh, and my church had been looking for a worship pastor and had not found one. And I was like, man, do you, you know, do y'all want somebody to just fill in? Like I have been a worship minister before, but it was at a much smaller church. Um, you know, I was, you know, not full time. I wasn't part time. I was paid just a, like a little bit, a, bit, a little uh -huh. bit. And I just, you know, just chipping in, you know, because that's what you do. If you're, if you're a ministry person, like this is what we do. And, um, and so coming back, have to so, back. so the worship pastor role is fairly new. You said, yes, like, it's the fairly last new. Year or so. so you're still kind of navigating what that looks like. And that's a big change going from like worship leader to worship pastor. I'm sure there's more responsibilities with that and a lot more time that you're putting in. Yes, for sure. And, and so this has really been the first time that songs that I've written have been out in the world. And for a long time, I didn't really think I, I would be a good worship writer. Um, I, I, it's not actually my, my default. Um, it, it, it's, it's kind of a tool that I've developed, like tool in your tool belt. You know, it's a mm -hmm. style I've, I've cultivated more from writing with other people who are worship writers, who, who really feel like that is their strength and their default. But, um, the things that I have written, the things that, or, and co-written that have ended up being taught at our church, um, which now there, there are four songs of, of mine that are in our repertoire as a church. Um, those things, uh, were not things that I set out mostly to, I, I overall, I didn't set out thinking I'm going to write this song and we're going to, it's a worship song. I'm going to teach it. You know, and in fact, the first song we taught of mine, I was like, this is not even a normal worship song. Is this going to be okay? Should I even be doing this? Who do I think I am? You know, and at that time I was still, I was still part-time and I had a, a boss over me. Now, now I don't, 
Um, but at that time, the, the guy who was uh, my boss, who was also a great mentor and really spoke into me and um, for the first time in my adult life really gave me confidence that I, I really needed. And I, I was like, does anybody see me as this? Am I just came? Am I just like a 13, that 14 year old girl from my youth group who is like, is anybody buying this? You know, like, I'm not sure I'm buying it, you know? Yeah. Am I, like, am I adulting right now? <laughs> right. Like, I don't do, is this for real? Am I for real? Um, but he, he really spoke into me and, uh, really encouraged me that like, we do, we should teach this. We should do. And he was like, Hey, if, if our congregation doesn't, you know, gel with it, then we don't have to keep doing it. And it, mm -hmm. it's going to be okay. But that's the first time that I really had to put myself out, you know, fear of failure, fear of rejection. And, so um, hard, especially like your first song that you're sharing with people. If it's like your baby and you don't want anybody to say anything bad about it or like, what if they don't get it? What if they can't sing it? Like all the what ifs. Yes. And so it what was, was that like? Labor. It was, yeah. that song had been such a labor in particular and it, and it is it, just uh, appropriate that it was a labor because it came from a lot of wrestling in my spirit and just friction and angst and, um, you know, and so, and I can, if, if you would like, I can give you a link to that, but it's, it's called O Mountain um, or bigger than you. If you search either of those titles, it will, there, there's a YouTube video on our, from our church and it's, it's just yeah. from our live stream. It's, it's nothing fancy, but, um, yeah, that would be awesome. So it's called O Mountain. It's o the Mountain. one that you wrote, um, but it's under your church. So if, how would people find it? Yes. If you, if it's three separate words, center point live, um, and point has an E on the end. <laughs> <laughs> center point with an E and live and search own mountain. So um, eventually I, I need to add it to my actual personal YouTube page. Um, and I'm planning to do that, but haven't done it yet. So, so yeah, that song has been uh, really, I, I've, I've been amazed how people have responded to it and just kind of um, taken ownership of it. And um, I, 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 I just didn't know that that would happen. And I, I didn't know that anything else that I would write would be okay to teach. I mean, and I was extremely careful because I didn't want it to become, okay, well, I write, so therefore we're gonna sing all my songs. We're gonna just, I'm just gonna like do everything that I write and yay for me and just gratify. It's not just gonna be gratifying my own uh -huh. creativity it has to be like lord are, do you is this something that can be used here for your people and so and there have been there was one song that um specifically i just um when we started a a, a building campaign just feeling like god was saying um our, our pastor our senior pastor was talking about feeling like god called us to finish the work and so um finish the work here on our property. And so we are expanding and, it, and um, just feeling really excited about what God is doing. And so wrote a song about that, that kind of to sort of serve as an anthem for our people. And so, uh -huh. so that was the first instance of like, I'm writing specifically for this group of people. Um, yeah. And thankfully I have people now through Brave Worship, the Brave Worship community, through Chrissy's songwriter course, Mm -hmm. um, through some of the conferences and things I've gone to now that is a thing. And so, um, in, especially in the Christian music industry, there are people who are out there saying it, that are those professionals that are saying, we want to equip people who are not in the industry to be able to, uh, serve their people for the kingdom in this way with using songwriting. So, that's been huge. And I feel like I've just been all over the place in my answer to this. Question. So much good stuff. Um, no, I love that. I'm glad you shared kind of more details about it because it is interesting how it kind of weaves together where you're like, I was already leading worship and I was already kind of songwriting, but then I was writing songs specifically for my church, like my yes. congregation. And that's something that I think is so special. And I have had a few people mention that here on the show about writing for a specific group or like a campaign or like a theme song an anthem that could be um, sung during a season that you're going through as a church and maybe it's not for like the worldwide church or maybe it is 
-hmm. you know so some songs will fit a certain time some songs I think are written before their time and then some songs are just like the classics that you can go back to and it's always timely it's timeless and so I think it's really good to have different kinds of songs and even as one writer writing in different styles or writing with different messages like we're such creative people I don't think we have to be stuck in a box if I only write for this reason or I only write for Mm-hmm. you know one group like god might call you to do something different that's out of the box and that's cool right. too so you mentioned that like stylistically worship music was not what you were like expecting to get into so like uh, as far as like writing songs what is more of your tendency naturally when you're writing songs my tendency is more um singer songwriter and uh, i love I love really interesting um, music and I feel like that is the most objective word I could have chosen, but um, (laughs) it's fine. But I I love uh, Dave Barnes. I love Brooke Frazier. I, uh, I, I just, you know, I grew up listening to people like Nicole Nordman, you know, Uh so her really lyric driven stuff, but she also had really interesting melodies and her voice Uh was so pretty. And um, I, and so like things like that, um, you know, it, it's gotten broader than, than that as well. You know, I grew up on like James Taylor and Stevie Wonder and like the, you know, so like just, just yeah, so you good, had multiple influences. Good, yeah. Like good stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so there's kind of a variety in there. Um, but also like I, well, I also grew up on, um, like traditional Irish music, like Celtic music. And I'm not talking Celtic yes. like en- Enya. I'm talking about like Irish bands, folk bands. Yes. Wow. I grew up on that. So, so that is actually, uh, uh, I, I, some of my brave worship people have, have been like, I can hear that. I can hear that. And some of the, you know, so there, there is some of that influence in mm-hmm. some of the, the things that I write as well. So that's amazing. I, yeah, I love that it comes from here and there and everywhere. It's like all those things that make you who you are come together when you're writing. And so some influences can kind of blend together and make something new, which is exciting. And I really, something that stood out with your music that I've heard so far is your melody lines. Like that it is lyrically driven and like really strong lyrics, but also like really pretty melodies like it would be really soft and then all of a sudden you just like go for it and hit the high notes and you're like belting it I'm like this girl has got some pipes you are like a powerhouse but you can also like control your voice and have some really sweet um soft melodies I just noticed that after seeing after hearing a few songs I was like your voice is amazing and so to be able to sing and to write and lead worship and all those things is such a gift and so I wanted to affirm that with you because you. it really is pretty and it comes through in the music. So Thank it's you. really, really beautiful. That's so sweet of you. I, yeah, I, yeah, again, I, I feel like I, um, I, I still feel like sort of a, a, I don't know, like, like, am I really here? What am I doing? You know, <laughs> is this happening right now? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, so it's, um, but I just, I just want, um, I want more than anything to just have a sense of purpose ar- around the things that I create. I think we all do. I think, yeah. I think, um, and I think that is godly. I think that's like God because he has purpose in his, his creating. And, and so I think just being, on, I think I've been hungry for that. I've been on the hunt for that. What does uh-huh. that look like? And, uh, because I've seen people who were, who were talented and I've seen people who were passionate and sometimes there's an intersection of both, but, um, sometimes you can tell on all parts of the spectrum, sometimes you meet someone and you can just tell like they're hunting for more than just being seen as amazing or being, you know, like they're, and so it's like, and they, they walk with a different purpose with more a sense of yeah and and you and usually those people well always I think um those people are typically on on the hunt for 
before God. They're seeking uh -huh. God's face and, and, and you experience that because when somebody has been with Jesus, they treat you differently than somebody who is not really focused on that as much. And so uh -huh. anyway, so that's been, yeah. like, I just like, want to be that way. And the and purpose. What I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say the purpose of something bigger than ourselves, I think, is what is what drives us. And especially like talking about worship leaders and writing music for the church and writing messages for people, like being a part of what God's doing and not yeah. being about us. And so I think if you have that talent that he's given you and also the passion to glorify God with your music, then like you can't go wrong with it yeah. because you're part of a bigger story and it's not just stuck on you know the styles that you like and what you want to write about if you're listening to the holy spirit and you're asking lord what do you want to speak to your church then yeah. he's going to tell you you know so right. it's an amazing honor to be a part of like the writing process and listening to be that voice and that messenger to the church i'd like to really jump in to, and dive into more of like the psalming and, and writing songs based yeah. on scripture um so far i know that you've put out some songs that you've written based on the psalms so mm -hmm. what has that experience been like for you uh well um some of that was and i think this is common for a lot of people who are believers but some of that was just natural it was just I would be reading things, I'd be praying about something, I would be experiencing something in my life, and it's, you know, where the Word of God intersects with my story and and my heart, and so um, that's usually the impetus for the song that comes out of that, and, and uh, then when I was around Chrissy Nordhoff and went through her course um, and learned about psalming, you know, to use her term, um, you know, she, she talks about just singing the Psalms and, you know, not really feeling like there's this rigid way you have to do it. You know, you can sing straight through a Psalm. You can sing, you know, just zero in on one verse and just sit on one verse and sing that over and over and just pick a chord progression. You just two chords or one chord <laughs> or whatever, you know, yeah. and, just, you know, I think just beginning from worship, um, and not focusing on like, not doing it for the purpose of like, I want to write a song, therefore I'm going to go, you know, do this. Um, but I think just, just as a way of your own private worship, um, your own relationship with God, uh, to just sing that to him and, and, and sing it over yourself, I think is just extremely powerful. And so that's where those things have come from for me. Um, you know, I, I wrote a song about Psalm 23 and I wasn't even really meaning to, I kind of, sometimes it comes from, it can come from a bit, very visceral place in the moment. Like this is what I need to sing right now. And then you write a song about it and there it is. But, you know, you were talking, you said this, like some songs are kind of before their time or something. And I, I think a lot of creatives and songwriters would, could say that they've maybe written a song that maybe they didn't think much of, but then in a later season, they were like, I needed this song now, you know, and I, that kind of yeah. happened with the Psalm 23. I think I had just been like, maybe looking at a couple different translations and just thinking, I, I, and I think I did it actually this day as just an exercise. Like, I am just going to spend some time in this and let's just see what I can do, Lord. Uh, let's just see what we can do here with this. I'm just going to, I'm going to just try and write a song. And I, I wasn't very excited about what I had written. I didn't really think it was very remarkable. I'm still not sure if it is or not, but I just think the word of God is remarkable. And yeah. so he can make something. Exactly. Uh, more more powerful and so I, I I had just written a part of it and I was like okay sure there it is and I I had written a couple verses and then uh I think as the as things were kind of shutting down this spring because of the coronavirus wow. I revisited it and I also had um some difficult things come up in my own life that 
I just was like, I just need some green pastures and some quiet waters. And I just need God to be my shepherd. And, and I just need to remember who my shepherd is. And so, um, just was taking that to him through that, those words that, you know, you hear your whole life, but you, you never don't need those, you know, right. That's the correct English term. You never don't need those. You never don't need them. I'm going to put that in a song. (laughs) That could be a country song. That sounds like a country song. Yeah. I think it would have to be even more like double negative E in order to be right. in a country song. Like, and tell me <laughs> the word ain't like I, pre- anyway. Yeah. Ain't so, should be in there too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll work on that and I'll get back to you, but, uh, it started it's, here. <laughs> it's, yeah. There you go. You're welcome world. <laughs> you know, uh, but, but as I finished that song, I thought, I just felt like I was kind of supposed to share it. And I thought like, okay, I mean, I, I don't feel like, wow, I am so proud of this amazing work of genius that I have just created. Yes. Yeah. You know, but I, I just sort of felt like I was supposed to put it out there. And so I, I just did. And, you know, my videos aren't anything spectacular. It's just my out of tune, upright piano and me <laughs> at this point. And hopefully someday I will have something better to offer, but that's what I have right now. So I love that. And I hope that it inspires people to just, you know, get out your phone, make a video, put it yeah. out on YouTube. Like that's the way to get started. And if you wait till everything's perfect, you'll never get started. You'll never do it. You know, and so yeah. I'm proud of you for just putting it out there and Thank you. <laughs> sharing it because it is going to encourage people. Like you said, when you're using scripture, God's word doesn't return void. And so if you're putting his word out there, it's just going to amplify. And especially using the Psalms, those were written to be sung. And even yeah. if we don't know the original melodies, they're in a form that's like poetic and is yeah. is phrased well for singing. And like you said, sometimes you might even get one line or one verse yeah. and then put that to music and you don't even sing the whole psalm. But mm-hmm. there's so much amazing material there and so much truth. And that's yeah. something that's been coming up a lot lately is like how to share truth and what is the truth that we need to hear when everyone has an opinion on what's going on in the world and everybody says, Oh, you should do this. You should do this. And it gets to be so many voices. They're like, we have as Christians, we have to come back to what does God say? What does scripture say about this? Because scripture is going to be consistent. Right. And when we're writing songs based on scripture, we're agreeing and there's power in that agreement. And so there is so much uh, goodness in the Psalms themselves that that's just a great place to start. Even if someone is a melody person and doesn't necessarily get lyric ideas for songs, you've got all these lyrics that you can just put music to. And then also, uh, I think you mentioned this earlier, but like having those scriptures in mind, whether it's Psalms or from another scripture um, and then praying those to the Lord. I think you mentioned like praying those to the Lord. And when you're in that place, that's a great time to write about it. Because you're feeling it. Like you said, I need those green pastures right now. I need to be in the still waters. And and, um, so I think when we're feeling it and when we're praying those things, it allows God to reveal it to us in a different way. I think as as creative people, as musicians, and as worship leaders, worshiping by example, and like you said, even just starting with worshiping, not trying to write, that's giving the Lord an opportunity to speak what he has for us. So it's like interpreting that in a personal way. And that's what makes it different yeah. and unique. So um, I'm glad you shared that, that like you, you were praying to the Lord and it's something like, like Psalm 23. We've heard our whole lives, right? And but, so many people have written songs with Psalm 23, you know? Sure. And, and that's a good point because a lot of people have written with the Psalms and that's fine too. But you can have your own take on it, your own style, or add your own thoughts of like, this is what it means to me, and this is what the Lord has taught me. Um, so I just think there's so much you can do with it. Well, and, you know, with it, it it's just, just thinking about how so many people have written songs based on that particular song, especially. I, you know, I felt even a little more like, okay, I guess I can share it, but like, there's so many better things out there, you know? 
in my mind, you know, and it was fine. It's, it's good. I don't mean to just be denigrating of the thing that I made, but I just, I just meant like, well, I mean, sure, I'll share it. But like, there's this great, I think people in songs has this awesome Psalm 20. It's beautiful. But anyway, but it was like, well, it doesn't, I don't, I don't know. I, I know I have some reach. I know I have some audience, whatever yeah. that means. But, and I, you know, I shared it and it's not like it went viral, but I did get, I think more views in the first 24 hours of that song than most things that I post. And I just was like, okay, well, I think, I think maybe God just, I think maybe there were some other people who needed some green pastures Uh and they just needed to be reminded of what's available and um and even hearing it from your voice too like you said your reach is going to be different than other bands like they may not have heard that version from another band or if they did it may not have come across with the same emotion as you're singing it and so I think there's so much room for everyone's voice because it's going to come across in a different way it's going to reach different people at a different time and so and even though you're having those thoughts, I mean, a lot of people <laughs> do that. They're like, this is not the best thing ever, but I'll put it out there. But you did it anyway. You know, you yeah. put it out there, even though it may not have been like the perfect production in your mind or like, I could probably rewrite this bridge or whatever it is. Right. <laughs> um, the things that can hold us back. Um, just the fact that you were willing to like in humility, put it out there and be like, you know what, this is what I have for right now. So I'm just going to offer it like that's all we're called to do is to show up and, and offer what we have. Gosh. And that's, that's been a huge, uh, sort of question. And I think, I think, as you know, you talk about purpose and how I was talking about earlier, like wanting to have purpose in the things I'm doing. And, Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's, that was a huge reason why I had so much friction in my spirit through my twenties. I'm 32 now. And so, in my twenties, I felt, you know, I'm having babies and I am just like struggling in so many ways. And I'm just feeling so unseen and unknown and like, what am I doing with my life? And, and I think that's common and it's, I think it's common in the twenties also, but, yeah. um, I also, uh, I, I, I am also a four on the Enneagram and that is biggest, like, deep feeling like Mm -hmm. I want to be a special unicorn snowflake, but I also want to fit in and be loved and accepted. And (laughs) so like, it's like, and, uh, and which I didn't have that kind of language at the time. I I didn't really bother to look into the Enneagram a whole lot, but like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense once you know your number for sure. (laughs) Yes. It helps. It helps a lot. It's like, oh my gosh, there's others like me. I am not the weirdest person. Exactly. So like, like, thank the Lord. I'm just a four. It's okay. Four is going to four sometimes. And so I, um, so significance is, was also really important to me. And, and I'm just like, God, I want to find my significance in you. And yet I have these, I have these desires and dreams and I, I just want to be of use to you. And yet here I am in my apartment and with my child and I, I, and and nothing, I have no way to share the things that I am writing and I don't even know if they're good. Maybe they're not good. Maybe, maybe I've just been delusional my entire life. (laughs) And like, uh, and so, uh, that was a really crucial period because I longed for purpose. And so I kept coming to God and I just kept, I kept bringing all the hurt. And I, I tried to, you know, when this rears its head, I tried to continue you to be like, God, you can be trusted with this because you have more to say about it. And, um, what I found was the unseen place is not a punishment. It is a gift. Um, the secret place. And, um, I, I, uh, it, it took an awful long time for me to f- get there. And, um, I think it's probably a lesson I'll have to learn in many ways, many times throughout the rest of my life. I think we all probably do, but, but, you know, I, uh, I think it's crucial for being able to respond with humility and to share things with humility. Like if I am not spending time with Jesus, how am I going to, how am I going to have something? How am I going to know what God wants to say to my church? Uh, how am I going to know his agenda if I am only full of my own? 
Um, and so in order to know God's agenda, you probably need to be around him um, somewhat. And, um, and I find this to be very convicting a lot of the time. And I, I often, I'm just like, God, I don't feel like I'm doing that good of a job. So please help me with that, you know, uh, but, but when this, and that was all before I became like a, more of a prominent worship leader at our church. Um, it was before I was on staff, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And so I, uh, I remember in, uh, was it 2017, all of 2017, I went to Experience Conference in Orlando, um, which is a great conference, but they had a songwriting workshop before, and Andy Rozier from Vertical Worship was there, and um, he, he led our group. You got to, like, write with a pro writer, but it was, like, six of us with a pro writer, which is, you know, not normal. It's not normally that many people that are right, co-writing right <laughs> yes and i look back and i'm like bless blessings upon those people for being with that many people in one go right but yeah. it was such a blessing and and just as an aside he is a, just so pastoral in the, his like heart and just who he is he's the real deal but he said something that i i've not heard many things in my life that have done this but he said this and it made the ground like shift under my feet and he said God didn't give you the gift of songwriting to bless the church. He gave you the gift of songwriting to spend time with you. And I was like, wait, what? Like this whole time God was hanging out with me. I feel like, and I feel like prior to that moment when I was writing songs, it was like, it was like, okay, God, yeah, yeah. Sh I'm writing this. I'm writing this for you right now. I'm going to show you this cool thing. So just wait, like, you know, and, and so it was very much like, God, you're over there and, you know, adjacent, but maybe mm. it occurred to me that maybe God wants to actually be more part of the process with me. And like, he actually enjoys the process. I don't even have to write a whole song and maybe I could actually find more joy in the process through right. that. And maybe that could relieve me of some of the burden of angst and insignificance that I felt. And so that unseen place became really beautiful and crucial. Um, and I don't know that I would be any good at what I am doing, or at least that my heart would be any good if I hadn't had that first. You know what yeah. I mean? And, That's and I think thing concept to just think about like, God wants to hang out with us and he's given mm -hmm. us this gift you know, maybe to share, but then some songs are just for you and for your heart and for where you're at, or like even singing someone else's song as a time of worship to prepare your heart for what he has to teach you personally. And so, yeah, songwriting is such a gift. It is that quiet time. And I feel like there's this like incubation time of this song before anybody has heard of it. You know, and like you said, I don't know if this is good or not. Nobody's ever heard it, right? I just wrote it. So it is what it is. It's brand yeah. new. Who knows? Um, but I love that you said the unseen place is not a punishment. It's a gift. I wrote that down. That is so, so good. Um, in the season of motherhood with young kids, especially, but also as a songwriter, because that unseen place of writing the song and maybe no one's even heard it yet. And you're like, well, is it any good? And we try to like figure that out, but it's like, God's given us this treasure and it's this gift. And he's like, here you go. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. And so it's an exciting place to be. And just even changing our thoughts about that, changing our, um, our concept of what the process is supposed to be like, it is a process. Yeah. And so we don't need to get stuck in you know, trying to figure out how is this supposed to go out into the world? Who is this song supposed to be for? You know, just write the song. And yeah. it surprises me hard. which songs, <laughs> yeah, it surprises me which songs get out there and which songs people relate to and resonate with the most. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would say don't throw it in the trash can. Like, if you're writing lots of ideas, like, don't throw anything away because maybe it's supposed to come back in a different way. And so I think it is a gift. He's given it to us. And so it's just about what we're going to do with it. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time and your story being on here. Wow. It's such an encouragement to me and I'm sure for the listeners as well as fellow songwriters. And I would love to 
let people know how they can connect with you and hear your music. So what's the best way to do that online? Yeah, so um, I don't have a whole lot, but um, on YouTube, uh, my first name is Haley, H-A-Y-L-I-E. And if you look up Haley Sings, that's what my YouTube channel is called at the moment. And uh, you can find me on Instagram at Haley Alcott, H-A-Y-L-I-E-A-L-L-C-O-T-T, two L's and two T's. Um, so those are the two main places that uh, I share things uh, at the moment. That is awesome. Thank you for just sharing about your process and like what the Lord has shown you and taught you through it, because I think so many of us as creative people can relate to that. So thanks for being open and honest about it. And also uh, just sharing what you've learned so far. I'm excited to hear the songs that come <laughs> moving forward and just really appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you, Lydia. And your podcast is awesome. You're, you're doing great things. I I've, I've really love just what I've listened to so far and just the content you've got such a variety on here and I think it, it really is coming alongside songwriters of at all stages that um, are just wanting to learn and grow and pursue their purpose and in, in the Lord and find that in their creativity thank you so much Thank you so much for watching this behind the scenes episode of the Rustic Songbird podcast. I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel and give it a like if you enjoyed this conversation. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss more videos like this coming soon. And subscribe to the Rustic Songbird podcast for all the previous episodes, interviews with people in the music industry to encourage you, to inspire you, to equip you, to take your music to the next level. All right, hit that subscribe button and I will catch you in the next episode.